Hello! Welcome to today's installment of Prove It, where we're going to be looking at proving what the magnitude of a 3D vector is, and hopefully showing that it's pretty much just Pythagoras in 3D. So, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about if you have the vector A, where A is X lots of I, plus Y lots of J, plus Z lots of K, where I, J, and K are just taking the various different dimensions or directions, then the magnitude of A is conveniently the formula, the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So effectively, as I said, Pythagoras with a third variable. But before we continue any on further, then I must remind you, Yep, the usual thing of the things in these videos are not things you need to know off by heart for the maths A-level exam. However, the proof in here should be fairly straightforward, so if they were to ask you that, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But yeah, as I said, something you're not expected to revise. Right then, so as I said, we're going to be looking at this proof. Now, something worth mentioning is, although it is a simple proof and it is a simple idea, that's almost even more reason to prove it, because it almost seems too convenient that we're allowed to just add on the extra z squared inside the square root, um, because I must admit, as some sin when students are trying to predict what this formula would be, um, once a student did uh, suggest to me, oh, why isn't it a cube root and cubes in there, um, considering we're dealing with 3D? Well, there you go. This is the proof of why it is squared and still a square root, even though we have three dimensions. Okay, so what will we need to have a go at the proof, or what will you need to have a go at the proof as well? Because I always encourage you to have a go at the proof yourself and then watch the video to see whether you're right or not. So one thing you'll need is this diagram or a diagram similar to it. I must admit, you this is not the only way you, you have to draw the diagram. And I've made a few weird stylistic choices here, like, for instance, making uh, the J component Y uh, downwards, uh, when normally we might intuitively gravitate towards making that up, just because the positive y-axis is up. Now, admittedly, that's not going to affect the final proof because the y, or the direction, I should say, of whether things are up or down, left or right, back and forward, it's just pluses and minus signs in vectors, and, well, we're going to be squaring a lot of stuff, and therefore, minus signs won't matter. Um, and the only, reason, the only reason I made it the way you can see it here is just so that when we're drawing some diagrams in a bit, None of the lines are overlapping in annoying manners, so we can still see everything that's going on. Um, and then the other thing we're going to need is, surprise, surprise, Pythagoras. Who saw that coming? So, without much further ado, let's get started. So, of course, uh, the first thing to point out is we are trying to find uh, the magnitude of the vector O A, the vector that takes us from O to A, and therefore that vector would be... Um, the vector x lots of i plus y lots of j plus z lots of k, as I already said. Alternatively, of course, a reminder, you can always represent vectors in column vector form. It means the same thing, it's just representing it in a different way. Still gives you all of that same information. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to um, therefore realize is if we're finding the magnitude of O to A, that is effectively going just straight from O to A and asking what is the length of that vector. So if that's what we're trying to do, well, we actually have a bit of a problem because that's the whole point of the proof. We don't know instantly how to get there in one stage. Um, that's kind of what we're trying to prove. So for the moment, we're not going to worry about that. And instead, we're going to introduce a new third point B. The vector from O to B is a lot more simple to deal with. And the reason for that is, well, we're dealing with, or rather we're cutting out that third dimension. So now it will only be xi plus yj. And if we're technically still in 3D space, that would be the convex to x, y, and zero. But as I said, this is kind of just um, the same as narrowing it down to 2D because that third dimension isn't really playing a part at all here. So for ease of um, calculation, could view this as just a vector x, y. Right, that's helped a lot because we know how to find the magnitude of a 2D vector very easily because that is just Pythagoras because we got a right angle triangle with the X and the Y and therefore the hypotenuse can be simply calculated by doing square of X plus the square of Y square rooted. So there we go, that's the magnitude of O to B. 
Uh, by the way, worth pointing out, I mentioned the word lengths, and for the purpose of these diagrams, it's important to view as lengths. But a reminder, vectors aren't necessarily representing always lengths. They can be representing uh, velocity, acceleration, forces, pretty much anything in mechanics, so momentum as well. Um, not that you deal with that in maths A level. Uh, so, yeah, therefore, just be aware we're going to be interchange interchangeably using the word length, but in reality, that isn't necessarily what we are looking at. Okay, so um, now we've worked out O to B, that's a big help. And the reason that's a big help is because now we can reintroduce O to A. Because now if we look at O to B with B to A and O to A, we've formed a right angle triangle. It's a triangle that's an angle in the three-dimensional space, but it is a right angle triangle in its usual 2D shape fashion. That's great because it means we can now work out the length from O to A because we've got the length of O to B, uh, which we've got up atop, the magnitude of it. And then we also know the magnitude or length from B to A is just going to be Z. The K, of course, is just telling you what direction it's going in, but we don't need to know about that. We know it's already perpendicular to um, the length O to B. So therefore, we can take those two things and whack them back into Pythagoras again. So doing that, well... The length of OB squared plus the length of BA squared gets you this. And then, what do you know? Wait a minute, the square and the square root are going to cancel out or simplify. And therefore, we are just going to be left with, voila, the square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. All three things squared and added together. Boom. There we go. We have proven the magnitude of a 3D vector is the square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Nice.